Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't got social media. I don't got any of that stuff because like. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh? Let's talk about that for a second because that's brave and I admire that and I wish that I could do that because I'm a slave to my phone. I'll be mm -hmm. the first to admit it. I have to fucking look at that thing every 10 seconds to see that little bubble pop up or fucking something new on my timeline. And I'm, I, I, it's not even something I do. It's, 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 it's instinctive sickness, at this bro. It's, it's a, a sickness. sickness. I'm I like, fuck this phone. Get this fucking thing away from me. But then it calls my name like the telltale heart beating hideously in my fucking bedroom until I pick it up and look at Instagram and see a booty shaking. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? Isn't it sick? It's fucking It's disgusting. sick. It's taking away everyone's attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your attention is not yours anymore. Like, like I mean, initially, I got social media for the sole purpose of promoting myself through my business, you know, through DJing mm -hmm. and, and, and being on the up and up with what's happening. Cause you kind of got to, you have to, if you want to be relevant outside of being a, you know, wedding DJ, so to speak, you really got to fucking know what the new shit is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause yeah. you got to know what the yeah. kids want to hear Yeah, and you got to play it before they ask for it. So then you're the, the, the guy who gets it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but unfortunately, that's brought me to a space that I don't really enjoy being in. I think if you lean hard into it, it helps for me, at least. Like, no matter what, whether you want to or not, you just said it. You're a slave to the phone. You're going to be looking on there. It's calling your name. It's taking your attention. It's doing all these things. At least for me, if I lean into it and I say, all right, I'm going to be on my phone. I'm going to be on social media anyways. Why don't I put effort into posting? building this social media like create, yeah it's not a bad make thing more reels do this do that like that I'll be honest, helps me at i'm least. i'm the creepy guy in the corner looking at everything yeah. and i need to i i used to post more and create more but i i've i yeah i'm not that to guy. channel it because no i matter mean what, even you're gonna do it no yeah. matter what you're gonna do it while you're fucking driving while you're djing oh, while you're yeah. talking to my somebody girl else. hates it she's like you're always on your fucking phone and i'm like no i'm sorry <laughs> well all right how right battle raps because i've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends I, that's why they rhyme about jewels not life because the ice on which they skate what's up club killers what yeah. up yeah yeah what all is right. up man we're live, baby. Radon. I've never seen y'all before. What's up? Radon the God in the house. What's up, Radon? We What's have so up, much man? to talk about. I'm excited. I'm excited for you specifically to hear Radon's thoughts on uh, the technology coming out, AI and, and, and the metaverse and all that. You're right, because when you first brought the metaverse to my attention outside of what Facebook was showing me, which is people dancing with penguins and such, yeah. Um, he said that you like opened his eye his third eye to it and that it was the future and everything like that it now just, it, he made it a little more comforting i feel like i want it okay because it was freaking me out a little bit only because i'm a traditional i'm an old school kind of person i, I we're, we're getting too too deep too quick we let's, let's start right, off we'll kick off the episode welcome welcome to the podcast episode 68 radon chow in the house what up ceo of radon creative and god knows whatever else bunch of inventions and all sorts of things but really is radon your first name yeah that's awesome you got to talk at mic. first i thought maybe yeah, yeah i thought maybe it was like a dj name because it's a fucking it's a pretty strong name radon it's like it almost sounds like a mortal Kombat fucking character character yeah. thank you man i, I, I mean I, that's a strong name thanks my parents man <laughs> lightning <laughs> chow and gary chow <laughs> i was I, my my government name is not so cool so so this is what I want to touch on, because I feel like we're going to have to reel Radon in a couple times here. He's got a lot of information. The He's a kid, free thinker. The kid is a free thinker. He's a good talker. And I definitely want to get into, you know, just to, just to set up the timeline here, where you started and then the whole experience in Austin going to school and that whole creative like space thing that, that you have taken and are trying to replicate what you're building here in Houston and uh and why then Houston? also the metaverse yeah yeah <laughs> damn that's a lot that's a that's a that's a long deep question right there but we'll, we'll so, remind you along started, the way. like like what what coming out of you know high school going into college getting into the business world what's your what was your mindset you know give give me got you got you picture for me at that point you know so so at that point in my life I graduated college. I was in between my old business and uh, 
I got a photo booth. I built a photo booth company back in the day, 2005, and that's when it started. But uh, at that time, yeah, I got it, into this program called Capital Factory. Photo booth? It, now, are we talking like the photo booths that you see at like weddings? Or are we talking yeah. about like the hipster? No, 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 no. At weddings, because it was it was uh, $1,200 for three hours. Oh, that's good. So I was like, yeah, as a businessman, I was like, damn, man. What did the booth cost you to get set up? Man, it was nothing, man. I built it myself for like, I think it was like $1,800 altogether for the first one. First night, damn near. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It paid itself off for the first night. But I mean, if you count all like the like the the models that didn't work and all the stuff that I spent that like didn't fucking work, it, it took me like, but it was quick, right? Like quick to make back my money. Uh, but but with that product, I got into a place called Capital Factory. You guys know what Capital Factory is? We do not. I, I do because I've heard this story, but this is what I want to get Bro, into. Bro, this is trippy, man. It's like, you're over here, but on the screen, you're over here. But I'm like, damn, man. Parallel like, universe. Bro, I I don't, see, we're it. talking about the AI stuff. So this is another thing. It's trippy. So you start this uh, company? Is it a company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Joy Photo Booth. You're going to have to let me because... He knows more. Right. I, I know good, a little bit. No one else knows, so you definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely. Are, yeah, are voicing for the people who are finding out now. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was a company called Joy Photo Booth. Uh, I don't know. Some of you guys might have even used it. Um, how I got big is I went to L.A. and I built like this van, and I was you like, this, built a van? No, no, I, I didn't build the van. I bought like one of those old school Ninja Turtle vans. Oh yeah, yeah, dope as dope as fuck. The white Volkswagen creeper, one or the like the creeper, no 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 no, no rapist fan. Not, the see, rapist fan. See, I, I I was like I was like I was like I didn't want the 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 uh, VW because it was too expensive. That was our big money, man. I mean, that was big money. Yeah. I, I, I was just a startup business. That was big money. But I found like the the Toyota like classic, literally the Ninja Turtle van. I'd have to watch yeah. it to remember. Like 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 I hope you guys pull it up right here. Check out that van. It's fucking sick. It's a Ninja Turtle van. The old school. If you guys on the show, I know you guys know if you guys watch that fucking show, right? That's on Diamond Cut. Yeah, sure. it, it's old school. And I hope you guys cut this shit out, right? But uh, I bought that thing and, and just like made it into a photo booth, right? Like I had I had a camera inside. I, I, I put a system in it. So this was a mobile photo booth. Mobile photo booth. I drove around uh, 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 LA and I did a campaign called... Uh, 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 don't don't forget you're awesome. Okay. Yeah, and, and then I, I I had it all printed out on the printout because like I bought the most latest printer that printed uh, these stickers so that you you get a photo booth. I don't even think people still people don't even do that right now. And I print out stickers because I was like, man, if I print out stickers, it could make magnets and I could charge more for them because then like at weddings, like I would upcharge like. A magnet is $5. I'll sell you tickets, and anyone that comes and trades in, if it's 500 guests, 500 times five, that's another good lick, right? Right. So, uh, but then why I had that was then I, I used the van, I put a bunch of stickers over it. I said, paint the van, right? So PR picked up on that. So that 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 just blew up the company. And, and that was a fun, fun part of my life because it was just fun you know i was just fucking wedding crashing and For people sure. wanted me there you know? sure. were you That's single fair. at this time huh were you single at the time uh no no i was not single okay you know? uh, how did you get any work done being not a single man I feel like that's w most successful startups come from <laughs> single men just dedicating their life to their art. Your girl obviously was supportive of it at the yeah, time. yeah 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 you mean she was supportive of it um but yeah, I mean, like th that was a pretty crazy, crazy business. Now I think about it. Yeah, it's dope. So, so you yeah. made a lot of connections through that that helped you in the next. No, 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 or? no. I mean, yeah, 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 sort of, right? Sort of built up your capital to start what you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, like, like it, you mean, like that. By that time, that was already my my uh, uh, third business. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I, I already every business you do, you're gonna learn like one or two things that are really like strong that really help you out the rest is kind of like you're, you're always gonna every business you go into is going to be different challenges and it's truly just learning the mindset of getting through those challenges right for sure so i, I really believe that that's all really it really is i'm a fucking idiot that just 
just can stay concentrated hmm. but not concentrated yeah right so i always like to say i'm dumb enough like my success has come from being dumb enough to just do something and take risk. a lot of people yeah. not even to take the risk but just to do it like most people would think something out come up with an idea and then start thinking and think themselves out, out of, of the it, idea yeah. like oh I, I can do this but then if i do that this is going to happen if this happens and this happens and then oh if that happens it's not going to work you know yeah. it, like you think your way out of it like i'm just dumb enough to just do it and then boom all yeah. of a sudden it's happening yeah, yeah. you know yeah, so, so it's like connecting the dots, right? There's like two dots you always got to connect every day. The ones you think and your actions. Like how, if, if those two dots are connected and it's going in the same direction, then you're going to do well. Yeah. I mean, you could, I, I wish you guys had like a little whiteboard. Hey, because I always like draw, draw stuff and show. We'll talk to our intern and see if uh, she yeah. can come up with anything. I do have a whiteboard <laughs> in the storage closet here, but let's get to, all right, so the photo booth business taking off. You got the mobile photo booth. Mm -hmm. And then you said that, that business is what allowed you to get into the creative space in Austin? Yeah, because like back then it was like so innovative to have like this photo booth that like printed out, posted on social media. Uh, we had a thing called uh, uh, InstaJoy where like you would take a picture in the photo booth, it instantly show you on like a projector like you guys have in here. And then I had an iPad where you would click on the picture and it would print out that picture. Mm, okay. You see what I mean? So it's like dope ass shit. Like, like you could hashtag fucking the event and then it would show up on the big screen that, that everyone's having fun and you get to print out that picture and take it home with you. So like... Like that business was just, I, I just applied so many innovations that people weren't doing, trying to like, by like, like be different, right? right? And then those differentalities made me more money. Mm. And then that's how that business actually just kind of get got, it, it was like the innovation that got me in there, right? right? I didn't create the fucking photo booth, man. Right. Like I just made a really great product, right? But I, I feel like at the end of the day, that's what wins in the end of the day. Innovation, not not ideas ideas don't win nothing ideas just start stuff well they right? say that no idea is original there's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun it's never what you do but how it's done yeah kind of the great philosopher nas came up with that one yeah. for real man yeah, i'd love to like, talk to nas one day man nas lyric. we talk nas a lot of days so well, you get into the let's let's get into what this creative space is this is a this is a a company right mm -hmm. that invites you you now have an invite they're like hey we want you to be a part of what we're doing here yeah and what is what is that so my next thing i'm working on i've been working on for quite a long time right now is building a creative facility right like so right now we're a little bit over like nine thousand square feet in total well, not uh, even not even the what you're doing in Houston. What like where you learned about you know like in Austin what you were doing that that oh over there yeah what was it called Creative? oh Capital Cap Factory that, so Capital. Capital Factory is is a is a celebrate I mean I'm pretty sure people over here know, know what I don't no 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 y'all don't on game no okay so that so like in the technology world there's incubators and acceleration programs this okay. yeah yeah. You mean so incubators and acceleration programs are like the brightest fucking minds in there, like fucking, and they're like these investors, right? It's a whole giant culture, right? It's almost like a secret society, but not because they're public too, right? You can know, learn about it if you want to, right? But uh, they they have the incubator programs where where like you pitch, you not know, like on Shark Tank, you pitch, you see them, like right. that happens every week in these incubator programs right so as a as a member of the incubator you're mm -hmm. thinking of an idea and then they have a time set where you come present us with your idea and then they decide oh that's dope I, let's invest in that let's yeah that let's work on that so Man. it's like it's an amateur shark tank so no 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 no. this is the most professional shark tank okay right? so is it, it's it's a shark tank but without already having a. it's just for ideas though shark tank without hollywood shark tank without actual product though Without, oh, oh like no, 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 no. It has everything, right? It's a, a, it's an actual facility where there's like classes there. There's like during lunch hours, like you got to sit down and, and, and be sitting and having power hour lunches and you just see on Google calendar, right? Like if you're part of the society, you just then like click in, you can see the people calendar, who's eating that day there. There's always like a private chef cooking, right? So the CEOs will come in and talk to the next round of CEOs that they want. It's like a talent pool, right? So like even if you don't work out for your idea, 
You mean they'll take you and be like, hey, man, Mojo over there just created that idea. I think you're good at operation. Why don't you go help out his ass, right? Okay. So, like. It's a really strong network for creators. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but you want to be in this hub, right? Because when you're in the hub, then you're able to talk to these people. Like, like, like I said, the lunch was crazy because you would literally sit down and you'd be talking to like a, a exec about like a logistic question you had for your company, right? But like normally in business, like mm -hmm. another network or, or, or another CEO or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever would probably not want competition to, to give away the secret sauce to, right? I mean, but this seems more like everyone in this collective works together. Community. Right? Yeah, it's because like, community. and what's cool about it is like, let's say the investors, right? Like you pitch like an investor, these investors are all part of Capital Factory, right? They invest in Capital Factory. They are part of this collective. Let's say like we got, right now we three are are on Shark Tank and we're, we got a bunch of people walking in and they're like pitching, our sh pitching shit to us. Mm -hmm. You invest, right? And then us three combined now match your capital. So let's say you invest the ten thousand uh, dollars. Well, Capital Factory, in collective of the hundred investors, back up that investor. So does too. everyone? Is it like a majority vote on what you guys are going to invest? No, nah, man. Everyone just try. I mean, like as an investor, if you invest in something, right? Like and and. But what about bad investments? Like, I mean, that hurts the factory. So then, if you have like, if I just they just got them, but shit deals, am I kicked out of the? factory shit man i wasn't on the investor side okay. i don't know how that works but i'm pretty sure the investors know each other and they're not like they know they they're trusting so it. yeah correct. they know that that motherfucker's not gonna make a bad bet you mean, right. oh can i cuss me. on that shit yeah, yeah. Oh, okay tight correct me if i'm wrong um it would be as if it would be like if me and you were rich right if me and you had millions of dollars we made it big and, and then we decided you know what? We have all this fucking money and we all we know all these creative people. Let's start a business, call it capital uh company or cap what's it called? Capital factory. Capital factory, right? And then we're like, "All right, we're we're going to build this building. We're going to have all these people here. We're going to provide them with chefs and lunches and and massages and like it's going to be an amazing place." Not just place that, to just be. like the professional help, right? Right, right, right. And then it's going to be an amazing place to be. There's going to be uh, idea people, there's going to be business people, CEOs, all these people. And then when someone in that place comes up with a good idea, we're like, "Yo, that's a good idea. We're going to take all of our money that we got, we're going to put some into that." You know, right. it's like a farm. Like, and like, that's why I, it's I, called I, acceleration program, okay. right? It's like it accelerates you, right? Like you have you have like the facility which has like production, which has you know, like like areas for conference rooms to have meetings. Like you go downstairs, there's like bunch of people on like this maker box system they're like printing out fucking digital shit right you go in another room there's a production lab for you to take pictures of your product like having that kind of facility to create as a business owner uh in the technology world you can get really far right that's how i mean a lot of these great technology companies come from like uber you know I mean? yeah like, i think that's like a big thing in tech right it's huge incubators and like incubators and accelerators i mean it, this is I mean, it's nothing new there's there's tons of these uh, these things so now with that now coming from that being a part of that having that in mind you now we're talking houston right what's going on here you're yeah. starting your own thing based off of that based off the model but not necessarily for not for tech, tech more on the creative side yeah exactly right like more for 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 like for like content mm -hmm. right like like i feel like you mean like we're getting into digital space a uh, majority of our times are stuck to 2d screens and eventually now it's going to be you mean three-dimensional screens right uh just investing in the future of i feel like the next wave of 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 human mankind is going to be creativity it's going to be just making things because everything else our necessity can be taken care of by robots and software that's so a good point now we're gonna I like make shit that makes us it. happy and laugh man what else are we gonna do eh? that's a good point now now let's go down that direction for a second because this is something that i battle with every day Same, when i brother. from from going into fucking checking out my own food from a kiosk to fucking ordering off a grubhub or whatever the case may be i feel in the not so distant future unfortunately 
we're almost going to be enslaved to the technologies that we've created because we had this renaissance of technology boom that's like we need to make more ai and things need to be more tech because like by the nature of the beast we just wanted to create more right but now we've almost created too much and without a human workforce are we just like living off the benefits of the robots we create and then for the common folk that aren't like yourself or a free thinker or uh you know someone on the up and up of this turn what what, what happens to them what happens to the clerks well well i believe that money's about to be a, truly abolished because it doesn't make sense we always go in depressions and recessions right like what would take the place of money if it was gone man like you no know, back in the day people used to barter you know how hard it was to fucking barter and people did it and it worked for a, a quite a long time with big civilizations right i i like this i, I like but now this is going now imagine I, if you barter and you, you got phones, man. Everyone got phones. We could barter so easily. I what? like this because I was just talking about how much I hate money, and I think skill is a is a much more prominent and important ability to have, or you know. So, and I think in a perfect utopian society where people just believe in free trade, that's great. However, unfortunately, in the reality of things, the beast among us must eat. Must eat, and it has to someone enslave us with something a tool like money yeah. and i yeah, know that the sounds fucking hand. really dark and everything but it's a reality the people that are in control the real people that are in control are not just going to give it over and say oh you know what you guys have a good idea of a peaceful society without us fucking s sucking the blood of you're of talking like slaves. permanent washington you're talking like like well I, I don't know what that is but I, I just know what i see and i i see that these companies aren't going to just fork that over you know what I'm saying? Companies, uh, banks, you know what I'm saying? All these systems that are set up off of money, they're not just going to abolish money. But I mean, I mean, like, you mean, the, the, the beautiful thing is in life, there's still death, right? So it brings equality to, to life right now. Because like all these greatest leaders and all these people that had money, they're going to die. You know what I mean? But and then, they keep their money within their families. So no, no, no. That, 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 programmed but that's what I'm care. saying. The next renaissance is creativity of like these emotional standpoint, right? Like we're going to do things to make ourselves happy. And that's going to be the most valuable trait that we're going to have. Everything else is going to be turned into good. Everything else is going to be commoditized by AI. Okay. AI is going to commoditize everything you could possibly think of other than making each other feel good. Right, and then that's gonna become very valuable well, as human beings, right? I mean, robots that can make people feel good. I mean, Both yeah, vibrators. yeah. But I mean, it, 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 in what you're saying, I, I understand where you're coming from because, like, we, the, there's a lot of jokes on here. Mm -hmm. so yeah, sorry, don't take anything too serious. Yeah, but but the uh, the the kind of the the way that people interact that gives you a happy feeling. Like when you're talking to someone, you can't get that talking to a robot. It doesn't have emotion. It doesn't have. Uh, a sense of love you know what i mean that you yeah. you're not going to get the good feeling from it right yeah, you can't yeah. snuggle with a robot and get that that warm feeling that you get from hugging a real human being. exactly and yeah. although they have created ai that can make art i've seen it um ai that can create music you know what i'm saying based mm -hmm. off of algorithms and shit that they put together i still find it hard to believe that it's gonna transfer that like these robots are just going to to essentially serve us and then we won't have to worry about working for our money. Yeah, is that kind of where you, that's you, the where world you, yeah. that you envision. No, I think a lot of necessary things. And I mean, I, I, you're mean. a smart dude. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to discredit anything you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just playing devil's advocate because I haven't been enlightened to it. Yes, not necessarily yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, at what point? Because unfortunately, I see it as the future getting darker. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be that way. I want a, a great life for my my children and, and mm -hmm. their future generations. But at what point do you see it turning? Is it through the metaverse? Is that going to be the next transformation into this society that you see of free free uh, uh trans or what, 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 free trade? I don't know. What I believe everyone's getting smarter, but not emotionally smarter. Mm -hmm. So you ain't. That's when information makes you bitter, right? Right. Yeah. That's, that's why you, you early go, oh man, you know, if I just didn't do things, most people overthink things. Mm -hmm. The overthinking is just too smart. Right. 
is because the emotions haven't caught up to their intelligence yet, right? So, okay, so, I understand that now. That's the next step. Instead of, oh, shit, I understand that now. I'm afraid of it. So I'm not going to go over there, right? So just paint paint the picture for me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's Let's try and get a foundation for what we're talking about here. In in how long would you, if you had to put an estimate on it, think that something like this would happen? It's 2022 right now. You think in like 2050? You think in like 2030? Yeah, like 2050, 2060, right? Okay. It's going to be a slow transition. It's not where we're going to be like, voila, right? Yeah. Like we're going to go through the, like these like horrendous time, right? I, I, like so I said. The, do you have a timeline that you could envision? Let's, and obviously not to a date, but like if you were to like... Stand no, because out. because I I I am I ain't the magic, right? I just know I'm trying to swear not to go in a certain direction, right? Yeah. Like okay. I'm trying I'm trying to fucking light. I'm trying to throw wood on the right side, I so it. it burns right, right? So so it's it's this is more it it's it's based almost on a way of thinking that people have to start putting themselves in the space and stop thinking I need cash, cash, cash. I need to do this, that, and the other, and start thinking about being a creative and making yourself happy because cash doesn't necessarily make you happy. No. And at the end of the day, we all want to be happy, but we think we need material things to make us happy. Mm -hmm. Right. So what you're saying is fuck the money, create, you can do that for free essentially. Right. No, I, I don't mean because like that, those words are so literal as I say, I say fucking all to fucking making money. I'm a businessman. Right? right. Like that, that right, right now we still live in that world. So we can't even think in that. How dimension. do we how how do we transform the the society that we're in now based so heavily on money mm -hmm. to a world that's based more on just making each other happy and Barter letting the auto and trick. the AI automate the rest creating the right culture? What's that culture? How 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 is it is it more spaces like more of these incubators where we all work together and kind of see ourselves as one unit? Yeah, it's like incubators. Uh, I think those are always great. You know, because like incubators, like you know, collective mind thinking, hive thinking has always worked in the human mind. And then as long as in you know, those hives are hived together in the correct fashion, then yeah, I mean things sway in a certain way, right? They tip. I like I like that way of thinking, and I wish we. I, I hope I'm not gonna say wish. I, I'm hopeful that we kind of like start moving in that direction more because it, it's it's it seems like a new way of thinking, but this is how the ancients always thought right especially when you think about ancient buddhists and stuff like that that we're all one collective part of a body mm -hmm. and you don't want to hurt yourself so you work together rather than kind of i i feel like it, we're almost in the dark ages where like we don't want to like share with everyone we kind of like hoard our, our 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 stuff you know what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah, everyone, yeah 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 but the majority of people no that's that right now we're in a definite split everyone is every man for themselves fuck everyone else we just got through covid where it, they, that was like the real start i mean i i feel like my life everything i did before that whole 2020 shit is gone like that it doesn't matter <laughs> it's gone it's it's not even who i was who i am like it, i don't know i even, mean well if there was ever a way to separate people more yeah that was it you they know did it and they I did it to, good to, job man. to your, your your point of how dark it feels and seems like we're heading in a dark direction i think that's true and i think that it's only going to get worse before it gets better, but it is going to get better. I think right. it's going to take that. I think it's going to take a breaking. Of... I wish I knew what that tipping point would be so I could be a little prepared for it. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I do you see? I, I currently do you see things on an upswing, or do you think we still got a? a... I think everything's on a on an upswing. Downswings are upswings, man. Like downswings are up. of the of the of the market. So yeah, BB is like what we're talking about is emotional intelligence, right? It's like remember the hive acts as like a whole human being mm -hmm. right so like what we're talking about right now is that society we would call them society gym google social media whatever right we're still talking about the same thing almost mm -hmm. right so it's kind of like like that that's gonna switch and that always switch in between like you always got these like great minds that come in out of nowhere right like if you think about it like we have some great minds during this time man we got like elon musk out there For just sure. like dominating it For I mean, sure. like we yeah. got a lot of people doing good things some some people may even call our uh our president retarded for not meeting with elon Musk. <laughs> right they may call him retarded for many reasons and that but man's name is uh 
Can you still say his name? I don't think you can. They, they'll can you cancel say his our name show. On the internet? His name. Yeah, man, I don't want you guys to take his show taken down. No, no don't listen, worry. We've said much we're... worse things. Okay, you know, quite the ride. You know, it's funny. I, I ran into a guy yesterday at at, at Bell when I was setting up uh, Hendrix, and and he's like, "You talk about dicks a lot," and I'm like the fuck is this guy talking about? I haven't talked to this guy in six months and he tells me this and I'm like, what? He's like, on the podcast. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. We it's do a, talk about dicks a it's lot. It's a here. common theme. I mean, we are, we sit down in front of this camera and we try and be as honest as possible and I think a lot of times what's on a man's mind is not other dicks, but his own dick. Yeah. You know? We yeah. talk a lot he about masturbation you know? on, on, on this show because he's like, what it's, the fuck did I sign up for? It's quite... But this is a nice break from the norm, and I'm glad you're here. And yeah. I'm excited to hear more. So the collective, the, the, was that before you had, had gone to Austin? Was your intent to go to Austin to be part of this? Uh, well, that collective doesn't have nothing to do with, like... Creative. But, creative, but right? That was that, just part that, of my that life. That concept of being part of a hive, was that the first time you had... Yeah, I did that, and fraternities are like a hive. I was in an Asian fraternity. Like, I, like high mentality works in, in 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 uplifting, right? The culture uplifts people. Right? I, I'll agree with that because anytime I sit down with like minded creatives and we work together on a project, like me and Strategy work together a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of have a, a, a similar vision on things, and it, it feels good when I'm done. I feel energized, but like when I'm like working solo on something by myself. I almost feel like like Smeagol off the fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, I don't like that feeling. And and I never really thought about it until you brought this up. But, but the Hive is the move for sure. Yeah. Hive is the move. And and I've heard you say this before at 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 uh, what, what? First of all, what would what would you call this space that you're creating? I don't know. It's well, a spaceship. You have, have, you have to have like a <laughs> name for it so I could reference it. You know what I mean? Like. The, it's right now we call it the studio oh, i'm going to the studio you yeah know, i talk to silas to talk to you oh we're at the studio we're but it's more studio. than that right it's way more than that but. yeah it's a culture i mean it's not even like done thought out thought out yet but like it, it's one of those things it's like you mean you can't i can connect dots like you ain't like 20 dots ahead but to see the next five dots i still got to do another five dots ahead of that 20. yeah right so it's like and and just Bet to go back to Dolo's point of the hive and and how good it feels to be there. I've heard you say this, like, you know, if you're a part of this place, I want you to come here every day, even if you're wake up and you don't feel creative and you feel like shit or whatever, and you don't want to do anything, you don't have to come here and do something, but just come here. Yeah. And most likely just being in this atmosphere, seeing other people work, seeing other things happening, you're going to be inspired and you're going to get through that little down period and it do could you, inspire you to create collective. You know? collective. Yep. Do you believe in, in in energy, and do you believe in reciprocating like people's energy around you? And do you believe that like because this is my thinking, but I could be wrong. But like when you're like in a space with other people that have similar minds and 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 energy, you can kind of feed off that. Obviously, you don't want hundred percent that are just going to be pessimistic. Oh, this is sucks. You'll never create anything here. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah. people that come in and are like I want to do something. But I just don't know what I want to do. And they're like, well, check out this project I'm working on. Exactly, right? Okay. Like, like that's what intrigued me when I was in the technology world, right? Like, that happens all day, right? That's how they move so fast, mm. right? Why is that not in, in the creative culture, right? Especially in H-Town, right? H-Town's like everyone man to themselves, you ain't like yeah. even the hip-hop world over here. Everything is doggy is dog ass world. Man man for I can't even get a barbecue together because no one fucking leaves their house. Yeah. Sorry. But me being pessimistic. Well, you do live about twenty-seven miles. No, but I have friends loop. in my area, and everyone that lives in my area has a house, and they want to stay in their house. This is what I miss about Chicago, and we talk about this a lot on the show. But yeah. one of the great things that we loved about Chicago, there's many that we didn't, but one of the great things we loved is the community aspect, and it's like everyone lives in such a small, confined space that people come together to congregate to do things. No one wants to be mm -hmm. in your house when it's fucking 600 square feet. You know what I'm saying? You want to get out and, and be with other people. And that kind of thing is like so dope to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Socializing. whether it's going out to socialize at a restaurant or going to a buddy's house to work on a car or whatever the fucking case is, block parties, all these things. I yeah. miss that. 
Yeah. I definitely miss that. You know, we fucking live together and we would throw a little pop up random barbecues. I'll hit up the homies. You want to come through barbecue? And then someone shows up and they hit someone up and then someone else shows up. And all of a sudden you're just kicking it. You, you get you got a little hive in the yeah. backyard. There it is. There it is. And that's what got y'all to right here on this show. That is well, exactly. Well, right? sort of. Oh, on this show. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. I mean, where it is right now, you mean like. I think that that was probably one of the main KPIs, the key key performance indicator, why this thing is still existing to this day, right? Mm-hmm. Is that vibe that you guys got, right? Sure. And that vibe was built in Chicago. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So like, yeah, I want to make- And it was built off actually creating stuff. That's, we didn't like, like we were we were friends, you know, like we, we knew each other through the DJ thing, but mm-hmm. really what made us like homies was like creating shit, creating Hell yeah. content, <laughs> creating videos, creating flyers, creating- yeah. So, yeah just yeah. making a bunch of stuff it's oh, yeah. yeah there's no feeling like like having like like being able to pull what's in your mind out and have it in the real world whatever it is a track a video an image a, a website like anything, anything. i almost think this would be a good way to, to segue into the metaverse because is the metaverse kind of a space where you can transform your thoughts into like visual representation almost immediately is that what's happening there what is the metaverse break it down for me because i'm guessing you know more than me bro the metaverse is about to be trippy as fuck bro. is that going to be a part of this segue to this next hell yeah man so so, so the metaverse i don't know i mean the, start from the bottom the... because our viewers are not probably hip on this i mean they might okay. be but so, we're not so audience show. right like the ones that have done uh you mean virtual reality which is like name that in the little white thing you put on the right oculus oculus and, yeah yeah oculus like you're gonna go in there and you know how like like I, if you guys played it there's like everything that they want you to touch turns blue right like it's like you see the gun and you and you see the gun and you put your hands on it and then it's blue okay. and then you know, it's, like, it's right eventually it's going to be you mean it's going to be augmented reality so your glasses are going to just see reality right and then you're going to see you mean i could be there i could be in this room right now and like teach you how to cook and then i'll be like hey just i'm going to show you as blue man or just call him as blue man right now right and then after that we're going to step inside a blue man right in reality and he's going to guide you and if you're a little bit off you ain't blue man can guide you back right so wait a minute wait a minute this is kind this of is quite awesome the concept because because I'm, I'm seeing what you're laying down so correct me if i'm wrong i'm wearing glasses that mm-hmm. what's it google whatever the fuck and i'm in front of you i'm just right. a blue you're, dude you're 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 there you're the blue dude but, yeah. but you're not in reality actually there you right? could be no. there okay. via the hologram internet. hologram right. are you an actual person or you're ai i could be ai i could be a real person because i think there's a difference yeah be- only because Although AI could talk to me, I'm not going to have a connection like I would if you were a human on a on a you know on another connected through another Oculus or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Right. But let's just say, for instance, you're, you're AI just for sake of argument. Mm-hmm. You're a you're a transparent blue man. Mm-hmm. You're cooking some food. I got the shit laid out, and I'm like, how much is a, a you know a pinch of salt? And you're like, put your hand where my hand is. We're gonna pinch this salt together and rub it in exactly <laughs> that's dope that's dope i never saw metaverse again all i've seen was drag queens dancing with penguins <laughs> yeah i know you've seen the yeah other. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, but i'm like i don't want to go there whatever yeah, that is that's vr okay when ar is it's whatever done. facebook keeps posting about yeah when when like, ar is done okay. you know what I mean like when ar is done i mean that's what i believe is going to be the end all be all because then you mean like do you have I mean, like power at the f- your fingertips. Like you're almost godlike. You can learn anything you want. You want to learn fucking Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee will come right in front of you. You go inside Bruce Lee's body. You practice with Bruce Lee enough. You're gonna become Bruce Lee. Pause. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm a child. Yes. Um, but yes, Isn't that's that crazy. Amazing. That's crazy. That's right? fucking wild. That's, that's gonna be fucking, fucking wild. wild. It's gonna be dope. That's it's crazy. gonna be dope. So then, will our homes? like have a room that are, is strictly dedicated to no 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 it's, it's augmented reality so like it's, wait so it's i'm not reality. actually there i'm just you're in just right so, so i'm really so, like here as a vegetable no a hologram could pop out right now like right, right, but, but are we still in this physical space yeah okay because that, i'm like i see people with the oculus 
you know, boxing and then they fucking punch through their TV, right? Bro, you need to try. Have you tried Oculus yet? No, never Bro, tried it. Try the Oculus. I have you one. Try one? it. Yeah, yeah. So you you draw the area that you're in. And once you get in the area, it's like you can't see the outside world. You can walk outside of the area that you draw, and then it has cameras on the outside, so you you can see the outside. And then like holograms. This is very up. similar to my DMT experience, to be honest with you. Really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> have you Radon? Have you done DMT? Yeah, man. DMT is pretty fucking crazy. Do you have like a, a very specific story from like when you broke through to the other side? It's called right breaking through. Yeah. No, nah, man. I feel Did like you blast just, off. Saw things just same thing, just more precise and clear. Okay, eh? well, so your boy blasted off. I don't know if we have time to get into it. We could get into it later. I love that story. Uh, it's 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 pretty heavy. It's pretty. It's heavy. pretty heavy. Do, do you got a minute? Yeah, fuck right, yeah. So check it out. It's two thousand and nine in Chicago. Got a homeboy I used to sell meat with, mm -hmm. and uh, he was really in tune with the whole. Uh, not really deadhead culture. It was kind of like when dubstep was like a thing and they like had like these like parties they would throw and they would just like get real fucked up on ecstasy and mushrooms and shit. So I'm like, I go to hang out with him one night. I ended up there with my buddy. Take some ecstasy. It was bonk. I mean, it was good. It was real, but it wasn't like good. It wasn't like the mints, you know? It was like the stack pills mm -hmm. with fucking yak and shit. So we do that and like going through the night and we're listening to some fucking weird jazz band and, and you know there's like paintings on the wall and stuff and it's it's a cool space but i'm like man i need to take something better so he gives me this fucking ginseng fucking roll I take that next thing you know back at his crib well, well i should say the compound where he lived which was like a community of deadheads right that was basically like a big crack house to <laughs> To, to, for you see that words. collectors man yeah it was a collective for sure it was a high and so they would just like crack sit around and, and and do k all day right but they had the best drugs okay so the better shit the, yeah that's all i mean that's all they're doing it's a so collective bro you know what i'm saying that uh, inclined mind so it's like now about 5 a.m 6 a.m we go to the rooftop they're fucking spinning fire and whatever and my role is coming down and i'm like all right man i think i'm gonna go and we had talked in the past before he was like telling me about DMT. Now this was, I don't want to say this was before people were doing DMT, but it was like, it was like known in the drug community. They call it Dreamster and shit, but it wasn't like Joe Rogan was talking about it back in the yeah. days. So he, he had told me about it and I was like, yeah, I want to try that one day. And he was like, all right, but you got to make sure it's the right time. And then he was like, do you want to try it? My boy's got some. And I'm like, I think this is the moment, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, a, like a, I, I felt like this was the right time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The shit that we, the way we did it, and I've heard of people using pens to do it and stuff, and it's like you see a little bit of color, flustered, whatever. This was something different. This was like actual extracted from fucking tree bark, but Whoa. not not ayahuasca, but it was like, um, it, it was almost like a gel, like a like like a like yeah, like a like a like a gel bead. If you were to roll up, you know, something like, like that. A, like, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was about the size of a pea. And they had a little chamber that was made out of like a, a airplane shot, mm -hmm. and it had like some Brillo in there, and it was like basically like a vaporizer mm -hmm. homemade man. We call those crack pipes, yeah, mm -hmm. or that, you know. So, uh, so he's like, "Yo, we'll do it," and then everybody like gets serious about it because there's like 15 people there, but like they're like, I remember one girl going, when as we're walking back to this room to do it, she's like, "I'll see you on the other side," <laughs> and I'm like. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I'm in for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still kind of that rolling. That would stop me dead in my tracks. See, I, I would have been like, I, all right, I'm, I'm on the way home. Just typical girl you would picture. Yeah. And uh, so everybody's like kind of quiet as they see me walking down this hallway to go to this room. But I'm like kind of still rolling, so I'm pretty pretty chill about the whole thing. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I go, I sit down on the bed. My homeboy's uh, like sitting next to me who who like was my good close friend, but he wasn't going to try it. But he was just like there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Emotional support, if you will. And then my other buddy, who was kind of like my guy, you know what I'm saying? Like he knew he he had done this before. So he's like, hit it, and uh, he's like, and then exhale. He's like, by your third hit, you're gonna feel it, you know what I'm saying? And and you're gonna take off, blast off. So I hit it once, I hit it twice, I hit it the third time. I didn't really feel shit, and I'm like, man, I I don't feel nothing, you know what I'm saying? I don't see nothing, nothing. He's like. Hit it one more time. He's like, but pull hard. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and just hold it. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So I fucking ripped this motherfucker as hard as I could. And I held it. And all of a sudden, I started hearing like ringing in my head. And I was like, what the fuck? But I'm still holding it. It didn't make me cough or nothing like that. And then I, as I exhaled, 
I just remember going, I'm there. And then literally <laughs> everything in front of me disappeared. My eyes are open, but everything became like a neutral color, like the color of the wall. It was a little bit more of a yellowish color, but just I blasted off into a different space. And I was sitting there. Now, I didn't, unbeknownst to me at the time, because I'm like not really aware of what my body's doing, because mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, it went into like a meditative state. And I don't meditate or know anything about that, but my boy told me after this experience that like, I was sitting down, cross, cross-legged on the, on the bed, and just like perfect posture and just perfect breaths, in and out, like deep breaths, like, like meditative breaths, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Nothing I knew anything about at the time, but my body just kind of like went into this mode, like a fucking airplane mode. So... I'm I'm in this space, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and like I'm seeing all these geometric shapes, almost like those uh, kaleidoscopes, mm-hmm. but it's like all around me, and it's not like colorful or anything. It's just black lines, and it's like triangles, kind of like that, right? But the whole thing is interlocked everywhere, like triangles. But it's shape shifting from triangles into like a geometric pattern of squares, but which wouldn't seem possible if you think about it, because it would take up more space. But it was doing it. And it was doing it like perfectly just kept doing that. Just that quick. And it, it's like everything around me. I'm looking around. Everything is this, right? I don't see anything but this. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, what the fuck is this? But I, it, it was more like, this is so beautiful. Oh, my God. It wasn't like a scary thing or anything like that. So I'm looking around. And then I see this like glowing image of what I thought was a Thai Buddha. Okay, which well, I later found out was the Thai Buddha or what I thought. The the shape. You know the Thai Buddha? Mm-hmm. It's it's not the fat Buddha. It's the one that's mm-hmm. like, yeah. So it's it's a glowing outlook. Almost like if you look at these can lights right, or these uh, lights, mm-hmm. you could see the light, but you don't really see the light. It's just like the glow of it. That's what the shape of the Buddha was up here. Yeah. Later, I realized that was me because I, that's Whoa. how you were sitting, right? But I didn't know it at the time. I thought that was like another thing. And that's just like there, and I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, that's crazy. So then next thing you know, I start seeing more black lines, but they're like waving. And the way I would describe it is like Pocahontas hair. <laughs> you ever see the, the cartoon movie Pocahontas or you've seen like a commercial of it? Yeah. And you know how it's like, it's it's not like hair strands. It's like clumps of hair. Yeah. Right? So it was like that everywhere around me, right? Almost like it's floating in water. And then it parts and up looks this face like this. And the eyes open. And the eyes were like glowing like that. Like just big ass eyes. Big ass eyes. Almost oval shaped. Not an alien. It didn't strike me as an alien at the time. It was just like, whoa, this thing is like right in front of me looking at me. It wasn't scary. It it felt like love, right? Everything felt Mm -hmm. very loving. Could have been the ecstasy I took before this. I don't know. (laughs) This is my experience. Uh, It didn't have a nose. It didn't have a mouth. But it like smiled with its eyes. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So I knew it meant it was a good thing right it wasn't like bad but mind you at the same time i'm seeing this there's almost like a geometric plane where there's like fire beneath it like i and i couldn't see fire but i saw like the glowing and i remember being like don't want to look down there i don't know what's down there i saw little things like jumping around but i'm like not gonna look down there i'm gonna keep looking up at this right so i'm looking up at it and all of a sudden it it pulls out a hand with like a, a big glass ball not mm-hmm. a crystal ball. It didn't strike me as that. You know what it reminded me of? You ever see those those like flowers they put in a glass ball, right? You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? It's like the flowers they like put a in flower, a glass ball. It's like ball. in a glass ball. Yeah, and they're like, like water. A coffee table yeah, decoration yeah, like, like kind of thing. Like one of those. Thing. But in it was like a city, right? And it took its hand and it went like that, right? And this like city just emerged and it got big. And it was like almost, it, it was almost like cartoon, like the way the city looked. But I knew it was a city with skyscrapers and everything. And then it took its hand over the ball, the other hand, and went, uh, went like that. And then it disappeared, the mm-hmm. stuff that was in it. Then it did it again, and out grew a flower, mm-hmm. like a plant. Mm-hmm. And almost as soon as that happened, it hit me. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything's gone. I'm back in regular, sitting on a couch in a, in a crack, or a bed in a crack house. In the right? crack house. <laughs> instant. There was no come down. It was instant. And I was like... I was, I was like, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. That's what I was saying. I was like, I need to go back. I need more questions. And I was like, and I'm just telling my boys what happened. It's beautiful and everything. And and it struck me that it gave me like a, a message, but it didn't tell me anything. But this was the analogy that it gave me. Mm-hmm. And I was like telling people as I came out of it. So at the time, I always wanted a 7 Series BMW. That was like mm-hmm. the shit to me. I was like, I got to save up to get 7 Series BMW. Got to save up. But the analogy that it told me through that thing was I could get that BMW 
run over a, a rock and get a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And that car is going to be essentially useless until I do something to it. Mm -hmm. But I could cut a blade of grass and it would grow back on its own. Mm -hmm. But yet we focus so much on the material shit that we create that's essentially worthless when life is all around us. And that's the real beauty of life. And that's what it gave me without telling me shit. And that was my DMT experience. It's and it was deep. fucking profound. It's deep. My boy's deep. That's crazy because like it wasn't growing nature. It grew like a city, right? Yeah, it grew a city. But I think the city was to show me the materialist stuff. Ah. And then it swiped it away and it like, showed ding. me the flower. Wow. And the flower was the beauty, the true beauty. It was like, fuck all this material shit that's around you. And look at this flower that grows. You know what I'm saying? And then it, it, it like transported the message into me it and that that analogy wasn't something that i like thought about after hours it was like after i came out i spoke this it to my friend it brain. was like it like fucking zapped it into my brain and you still believe it to this day uh, i i do, i'm telling you that what i'm telling you none of that is out of the reality of what happened to me no, I, that's I, what i'm saying it's, it's 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 pretty much like you still believe that today well, here's that thing. message I'm in human, your head and i definitely still love material items yeah. but mm -hmm. That profound message does resonate with me anytime I think about it because it was that powerful. Yeah. Though it didn't change my life. And I've heard that story at least four or five, maybe six times now, and it's always exactly the same. And I and like you know, while you're telling it, anyone that is watching this knows like that you really fucking lived that and yeah. it really fucking struck you because you remember I get everything. goosebumps even talking about it yeah. because it's it's that fucking real. It yeah. wasn't like I, I've done a lot of acid. I've done a lot of mushrooms. It's nothing like that. It's nothing even close because I've seen visuals that are fucking out here. You know what I'm saying? I took 14 hits of acid once. I mean, he was with me. You know what I'm saying? I was there. And and, and I've seen shit. Damn. Damn. 14 it, hits of acid? Yeah. Good ass. crazy. He's the guy that like t he'll take something that doesn't really hit within a couple seconds. He's like, let me get a little bit more. <laughs> really hit that hard. Let me get a little bit more. And but, then it all but, fucking hits at but this, once. But <laughs> this was a much, This was different, man. It's, I can't even call it a drug. And that's also the reason why these people wouldn't sell it, because they had too much like respect for it. And uh, uh, from you a can't spiritual monetize perspective, it. that they're like that. I don't. They're like I wouldn't feel right selling this to somebody. It was like something they had to share with you if they really fucked with you. So they made it themselves. From what I understand, I didn't watch them make it, but Hive that's, <laughs> that's what I understand from what I've heard from them. You know, I didn't. I never really hung out with the Deadhead guys again. I I probably only saw the other guy maybe three or four times since then. It's been fucking fifteen years almost. That's lit. We need to clip that story and make it its own <laughs> Dolo's DMT story that lives can, on the. Can internet we get somebody forever. to animate that? I think. Yo, I think if it's we time. that would go. That would so be a sick crazy, bro. visualization. The mean? problem is that that you okay. So I wear glasses, right? At the time, I wasn't wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. And everything for my stigmatism and whatever is not really blurry, but like black lines aren't that like thick and profound. You know, they're kind of like faded a little bit. But when I was seeing this shit, right, that essentially wasn't there, but it, I was there, but whatever. It was like the thickest, darkest, blackest, crispest lines. All that, that like, I couldn't draw a darker black line with a, permanent marker like you know what i'm saying like it's hard to describe in words but it was that crystal clear and mind you at the time i didn't have glasses so there was no i, I definitely wasn't seeing it with my eyeballs but i it was saw all it happening 100%. inside of your head but it wasn't because I, my eyes were open and i was awake it wasn't like i passed out my body went into like a meditative state yeah and well, i checked out but whatever i saw was real you went some you transported but i didn't like i've heard people say oh you like go through this tunnel like there was none of that it was i was still in the space i was because I, I remember i told my boy he was i was like he had like a bell i was like hit this bell like midway through you know what i'm saying i want to see if i'm still around because he kind of told me a little bit of what was happening you know and uh i remember him jingling the bell so i was still in that space but i was like in a different reality of that space if that makes in sense. a different dimension yeah, in a dis different dimension in the same place. But in the same place. Right? Yeah. And it all starts up because like when I have my experience, it's you mean shapes come out. Mm -hmm. And then after the shapes, you mean I feel like everyone goes off to their different direction. Like some some people always see light. Yeah. For some reason. I've heard I've heard that. Right? I think my my fault was was when I when I did it, I I like I wanted to go for a walk right away. So Oh like, shit. I walked straight outside and just looked in the sky and saw stars right 
In then, daytime or nighttime? This is nighttime. Okay. We were in nighttime. We are in San Bernardino. Okay. In, uh, in California area. Uh, and I just remember seeing stars, and, and those stars turned geometric. I remember that. It right? definitely does something with shapes, right? There's All shapes. And then the ground, like, I remember seeing the ground, like, the, the, the concrete start doing, like, like, tribal shapes out. Right. And, and for some reason, everything turns back into just math to me. Okay. That's yeah. just how your brain works is very mathematical or, or that's how it showed you things through math. Yeah. I feel like it was just all just like, like mathematical. And I was like looking at everything. Everything's like connected by shapes. Well, yeah. it, I mean, that would be the same thing I saw with geometric shapes. Geomet like geometry the kaleidoscope. Yeah. I think, and I think if, if you look at, the universe reality in, in general from a you know a regular standpoint or or even like a scientific standpoint everything is connected through math why yeah. do they show on the on the book they show the 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 shell because it's perfect geometry of pi right that's like everything is really connected through numbers there's definitely something about numbers for sure and if you ask my ex-girlfriend or any woman that believes in astrology they'll tell you the same thing it's all numbers it's all about numbers for yeah sure. if you ask anyone who plays baccarat they know how Ooh, i love baccarat do you know about um uh what's it called where they they there's a mathematical like they all have like sheets of paper and they yeah. like write it out it's, it's mm -hmm. called fibonacci maybe i think it's fibonacci right yeah fibonacci yeah that, that that's like a like a certain thing you see right but man people have all sorts of things i mean those I just remember monkey Dragon monkey bonus. monkey 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 <laughs> that's yeah shit. i love i love baccarat there's, baccarat's crazy there's a like a thing that that comes to me sometimes with numbers where like i feel like you can get any set of numbers you know like if you have a two and a five and you can get any other you can get anywhere with it because like, it's uh, all about the equation like any number can be any other number it can be whatever you need it or want it to be through the, right any equation, equation. Yeah. right and with just those two numbers. Are the absolute numbers? Is that what it's called? Or something like that? I don't know that it's like a real thing at all, but it's definitely, it's like, uh, it's something that like goes and comes sometimes. sometimes well, prime numbers, like, right? Are, are prime numbers? Anything that's... It doesn't matter I'm, what I'm looking to you for the is. math because I'm guessing oh. you're better at math than us. Because we're, <laughs> no. I didn't even graduate high school, so... <laughs> like, like that, that's like quantum physics stuff, right? Like pretty much like, I mean, there's like never ending dimensions. It, it relates right. it relates back in my mind it relates back to the real world in the sense of like anything can be solved mm. anything you know what i mean solved. like it doesn't matter what's in front of you there is a resolution you just have to figure it out am i using multiplication am i using a, a combination of multiplication plus addition am i subtracting like it's like anything can be done and and there is an answer but you need to figure out what it is you are going to what what method you're going to use to solve and it. that's why those great minds stand out when they can solve those crazy equations like e equals mc squared or whatever right because right. they they crack the code on so much and we yeah. don't really know what the i mean i know very little about that right i understand the basics of light speed and how that thing works right but i don't understand it like einstein does, did or like the other great physicists understand it and they can apply that into making nuclear weapons or whatever the case may be you know what i'm saying but it, it's it all boils back to numbers yeah so scientists man scientists science, man. Bill Nye. Science. so let's get let's get back to what you're creating here in houston let's reel it back in that's an incredible story i love hearing it every single time the passion in your voice is compelling Makes you want to smoke DMT? It makes me want to get high on weed, which I'm, it's been 21 days, and I don't even remember what it feels like to be high, and I just want it. It's almost here. Week and a half, right? Um, but yeah, let's talk about what you're building in Houston, because you have a, you have a space, and I, I think the more people need to understand that this is coming. This yeah. is coming. Oh, yeah. It's been working on and, it. It's been coming. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's an incredible thing for anybody who wants to create yeah it's a it's an amazing space right now there's a music studio i have the podcast studio in there there's a photo studio there's an event space there's a bar there's a you run your marketing company out mm -hmm. of there there's offices there's like uh that's what's existing at the moment and then you just bought even more 
square footage in the same space to build more, more studios. Of that. So you're more knocking down the walls or what? What's, what's the idea? Oh, no. So, like, I can't knock down the walls because I have one neighbor, hmm. right? In between the two spaces? In between two well, spaces. He's going to hate you. He's gonna, no, he's no, 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 no. Like walking it. past everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not going to like us walking past. going to smell like weed and sound like house music. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's cool. He sells, like, cars, you mean? So, like, Wait, we, what does he use his space for? I'm, not to get off subject. Oh, he just sells cars. He just sells cars and, like, washes cars and, like, does, like, AT&T business. So this is just, like, a place for him to work on his business. It's not like he's operating out of that space. Oh, he's operating out of that space. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. He sells a lot of cars. And, like, he's, like, a car collector. So it's kind of cool because we get to use his cars in some music videos. He not the one that Silas destroyed, hopefully. No, no, okay. no, not the Prius. Some girl, uh, well, came in last night, gone ho, so excited that she got to go in today to smash the rearview mirror. She was like, I called dibs on it. I'm like, there's no windows left, I don't think. <laughs> there's yeah, there's no left. more. After today, there's no more windows That's, left. Today was the last crash? The yeah, last today's time. the last crash. But like that creative space is just, it's like, I, I, I need to find pretty much like, like artists that are really down to make music, mm. right? And create content. And uh, and actually just want to create, right? Uh, they're actually good, right? Because you're going to have a bunch of people that want to want to create, but we're going to have space for those kind of people too, right? Like if your your mindset is like, oh, I like creativity, but you know, I haven't emotionally took the dive or I don't have the emotional capacity to be fully into it yet. Mm. It's like a hobby. You come there and you, you could... You can get a course on DJing, get a course on uh, graphic design, get a course on uh, in production, right? From the collective that's actually going to be teaching it. Now, you see what I mean? is that is that going to be something that they would pay for, or how does that work? Yeah, they, they, they'll be paying for that service, right? Uh, and then we'll be throwing parties there. Uh, so then the artists is there there that make the music because the facility uh, is made there for like a creator to have all the necessary space right to be able to create whenever you want you can make the music for you you can you can go to you can talk to the graphic designer and make your flyer and then you go in the back in the photography studio and make your music video and your daily uh, uh, TikTok or Instagram clip that you need right uh, and it's just a place where you can go and you know that you're going to be creating if you go there, right? Sure. Because uh, we need that. I need think we need that more than anything, especially now a bunch of creators are stuck more inside of apartments creating, right? Right. Uh, and, and then I feel like that's going to bring the next wave of creativity. Uh, I think we need more of these. I shouldn't be the only one doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that you ain't like big. So you're not worried about competition with it. You and encourage Hell anyone no. to get on the hive tip Even yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. because the thing that the, the hive men mentality right like certain kind of hives especially in creativity like you mean like there's different sorts of realms of creativity right like every hive should just use this model right to actually create whatever they want right like you mean like you go and suddenly it could be you in in guatemala right or like in like Cambodia, right? There'd be a different culture, but like still use the same technique. Right. You know? They're speaking their own language. They understand each yeah, other. Yeah, right, know. right, right. But I just feel like like having a space where people can do that is the most important thing. And then now we're trying to find artists, right? Okay. So if, if you're an artist on this on this show, you mean you're in Houston, Texas, you're region. in Houston, Texas, or you want to you mean travel to Houston, Texas and you really take your career seriously, hit me up. Right, like I'm trying to find some artists. Um, uh, just email me. Email me at radon at radon marketing. That's spelled uh, R A Y D O N at radonmarketing.com. Right there, it is. Uh, email me because I would love to listen to your music. I'm gonna be really real with everyone. If you don't got like a like a treasure chest of like of like music or any kind of creativity that you're doing, don't contact me right. because like. You're you just want people get, that are serious about this. Yeah, you, you ain't gonna get disappointed. I'm gonna tell you no. Right. Like you need to work harder. Eh? But at the same time, don't let that discourage someone who might, because some people make great art, but they're a little timid to show it. Because it is. I mean, like, look, I, I'm by no means a great producer, but I enjoy producing. But sometimes mm -hmm. I feel nervous playing my beats for other people, especially people who are good producers, mm -hmm. because I'm like, fuck, they're gonna think this sucks. You know what I'm saying? So 
to anyone watching who wrote down that email, don't throw it away yet. At least send the kid your content. He might like it. You never know. Yeah, I guess you're right, right? Because like you, you can have something really good and you just started. and Or yeah. not even just started, but you might just be scared. Like there's tons of people who are like authors, right? They write these amazing books that sometimes they pass away and then someone finds it later and is like, this is a great piece of poetry or, or a book, but they never put it out because they were kind of like, it's it's when you put out art it's it's from an artist's perspective it's so it, you're you're, you're kind of yeah. like you're pouring your soul out and sometimes it, especially an artist type person who's a little bit more timid mm -hmm. it's it, it takes a lot to do that so yeah not I to mean, discourage anyone for sure i just i was listening to uh joe rogan's podcast again anthony kiedis lead singer of the red hot chili peppers and your boy rick rubin oh i thought you were gonna say lily yaddy your boy Rick Rubin, Anthony Kiedis, was telling the story about Under the Bridge, which is like their fucking most incredible song ever. And he said that it was a poem that he had written and he didn't really like it. And Rick Rubin was talking to him like, yo, what's up? Like, you got some stuff to show me, like what, what you've been working on. He showed him a bunch of stuff, this and that. And he was like, "Ah, whatever. Cool, cool, cool. And then Anthony Kiedis was like, yeah, I got this poem, but it's not it's not it's definitely like not meant for a song it's not great i don't like it he said he was a little embarrassed because right. it's emotional and deep and rick rubin was like no let me hear it like like what's up let like me rick hear rubin it. produced under the bridge oh you didn't know dog wait rick you Rubin's didn't know dog yeah yeah he's the big bearded guy who, bro i love that man asshole, but no. you know <laughs> no I don't one know. says that <laughs> that guy's super it, cool i heard it from some i i mean honestly i i saw like a uh 30 second uh, Instagram reel where somebody was talking yeah. shit about him and I kind of believed it. I'm going to give Rick Rubin another chance. I'm going to, he has his own podcast, right? I think we talked about I, it. Uh, I don't know. I heard him on Rogan's okay. podcast, which was incredible. But yeah, Anthony Kiedis then, you know, wrote him or read him the poem or sang it to him or whatever. And he was like, he was like, this is the one. Mm. He was like, this is it. You need to make this a song. And it is now under the bridge by the Classic. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Love that song. I even loved that song as a kid. As a kid who didn't like anything that wasn't hip hop, I loved that song. And that and that's something he said. He was like, that was a song that got across every single genre, like any person. He was like, you could pull up in LA and hear the most hard gangbanging motherfucker bumping that in his whip. Yeah. Damn. It was it was such a fucking bit. It still is, but I haven't listened to it in a long time, but definitely resonates with me. That what Rick Rubin guy is just crazy. What's yeah. your what's your musical interest? We talk music on the show a lot. Man, I, I'm a little bit in everything. Uh, lately, I've been listening to was it is it is it Hank Cutter? Man, I suck at names. Same. Hank like, Cutter, are you playing? No, I don't know. This is what, a random. What kind of music is it? It's like uh, it's like it's like satire, like like club music. It's trippy. Okay. It's like, so it's like, like making in, fun of club music, but making great club music at the same time. It's like indie indie club music. Okay. Well, that was you heard that? in like 2009 when like uh, MGMT. Well, I, I I wouldn't say they were club music, but uh, yeah, kind of, Justice, right? That was like indie, but it was like indie crossover, dance. and they would like redo the Claxons, which is like super indie, but like or the Virgins or something like that, and they would make a remix of it. Hey, you guys are both DJs, right? We are. Dude, like, wh where do you think the music scene is going? Well, uh, we can only in what hope. genre? Or j you mean just in in general? In general, like, like, I feel like I feel like this, right? It only goes two ways: music goes happy or music goes dark. And and we're we definitely about going this. happy. We're going happy, and it's, it's going happy because there's a dichotomy between when the world is in a dark place, people look to happy music to uplift them, and when things are going good, people want to be gangsters. I don't know because yeah. uh, we're getting out of that trap era. I think. Of, of yeah, music. you know, you and know you can what? See it with crowds, yeah, and you can, yeah, you know what? Because like, uh, you know, a 2018 night in Chicago, once everyone's fucking drunk and hammered, they're singing along to Chief Keef, yeah. going crazy, pretending they're gangsters. But the economy's great, and everybody's making money, and everything's yeah. great. But then when shit gets really gangster. People are like, you know, maybe the, some happy music. They want nice. Sean <laughs> Kingston and Nicki Minaj starships. They, they want an escape. Damn. That's what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you guys think it's going more happy? I think it's going to go happy. It's for, definitely, it's in, we're, it's in a corny, happy, which bring me back to a time where I can sing along and it, and, you know, and in my mind, I'm in a better place. Yeah. Yeah, for sure it is. Damn. Because we reason, see I it, it in darker. real time, you know? Like, a, a record label might look at things from, like, a perspective, okay, what's streaming? I mean, well, now they can look at it in real time, but, like, more or less, you know, they, they look, they're they a few months behind it. We see it 
live as we play a record, right? Yeah. The crowd, how they react to it. And the same crowd that would have reacted really great to a dark track track now reacts great to Justin Bieber. Yeah. And not not like hip hop Justin Bieber, like the Ooh Baby, you know, that era. For real? Yeah. yeah. That's weird mind, as hell. It's fucking mind blowing, but I see it. Wait, it's, is that just in Houston or you Well, play? that's that's the problem is we haven't really left Houston lately. I mean you have. Are you seeing the same thing happening? um yeah i mean in chicago it's 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 still it's got a little bit more of a corny vibe i would say definitely less right. for sure i think that there's more of like a creative artistical tastemaker vibe in okay. the city of chicago but still may, maybe you don't have to go as corny but still happy something uplifting major chords yeah yeah so you sure. so so is it going happy or corny well, it's kind of hand in the hand. same vein, it's kind of hand in hand. It's kind of, it, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's different kinds of corny, but like, in general, if you look at a, anything that one would consider corny for the most part, I mean, you could even look at Cotton Eye Joe. Pretty, they, they don't get much cornier than that. But that's a very uplifting, happy song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Super. But but I I think that that comes from, you know, like, generally speaking, when you're thinking about more artistic or eclectic things, they're usually not as happy, right? Like any like. Even like Mozart, right? I wouldn't say like his music was dark, but I would definitely wouldn't say it's like a happy, you know, honky tonk piano jam. Yeah, and and think about this: in a dark time, you're gonna you're gonna probably have all of your artists that are creating creating more dark stuff because yeah. that's what's happening. That's the emotions that are flowing. That's what's going on. But the consumer is not necessarily looking for that so maybe yeah, they just a, left from their sales job and they had a big bonus and they they want to you know feel good or or they just got a divorce and they want to get out of that dark space and maybe that's what's playing into the fact that like a lot of this new music isn't really hitting in the clubs you know what i because mean because they haven't really caught on so if you're uh you know damn i think we just figured out something for artists huh yeah right we should be a and r's we should fucking go find the corniest shit and get rich off them yeah Sign them immediately. Sign immediately, for sure. Yeah, it's like the other day I went to Las Vegas. It's like Chainsmoker looks like their residence. At yeah. Like, Most, at the well, win. You know, he, and here's the thing about Vegas, right? I don't want to say it's where artists go to die, but there seems to be a recurring pattern of major artists. Right. J-Lo to fucking Britney Spears to whoever. And the same thing was, was the same in the 90s when Cher and all them or whoever was big in the 70s. They kind of go there. You get your residency. You've you've seen the world, and now you just want to have a home base where you can still make a million dollars a day performing for tourists. tourists. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's it. I mean, it seems like a pretty fair retirement plan. Yeah, and I feel like that's a great retirement plan for the artists. You're still rocking big audiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you just don't have to live on a fucking airplane. And to uh, touch back on whether it's just Houston or not, I was recently in Arizona. I played out there and uh, super corny for sure because that that's like uh, it's very touristy. It, it was very Vegasy there. There was a lot of bachelorette parties. There was a lot of out of towners. It didn't feel like like when the last time I was there or or when I had originally gone there. And it's like the college kids that had graduated and grown up and moved to Scottsdale and now they're going out and partying. It wasn't like a local scene like that anymore. It's very touristy. It's very Vegasy. It's very corny. I kind of saw that coming, but you know, how I saw it in, in, in the stage that when I started, because you were there before me, you you went to college there for a little bit, right? So yeah. You kind of had a, a, a background. I didn't start probably going there till like 2012, 14, something like around that. But I saw it in a stage where it was transforming. So it was kind of like if you knew. You knew that like Miami and Vegas, that's not it. Like Scottsdale parties. Scottsdale's beautiful. The weather's nice. The women are fucking beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like this was like for those who knew, that was where you go to party. Yeah, like mm. this is next up. And now the tourists know. Yeah. And it's fucking ruined. So where's the next <laughs> spot? Is the real question. Yeah, what's the new Scottsdale? I think Denver I've heard Denver is growing on their, their scene. I've never partied there. I don't know. I don't know either. I've, I've never partied there either. I've I'll go there, there and smoke place. some weed, though. I'll tell you that. Definitely much. a big November weed 1st. smoking place. You uh, do you dabble in the marijuana, or can you say I don't know? Oh hell yeah, I love smoking weed. <laughs> hey, how about this? Because because I've never heard you tell this story. I've only heard it secondhand. Uh, Dro, right? Mm -hmm. 
incredible graphic designer, your mm-hmm. employee. Mm-hmm. I heard that when he uh, graduated school or was graduating, graduating or whatever, his project, his senior project, or like the project that he did to find the job was like a weed-based um something a weed based something and i heard that the teacher was like what what is this bullshit you're never gonna get a job with this this and that and then along comes fucking radon (laughs) who loves weed sees it and is like you know whatever what is it you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah i know exactly what i'm talking about because like i hired alex from uh the art institute and uh fresh out you mean like I went to the the back then, man. I, I still wish they had them right now, man, because we've been trying to hire people. So you're a graphic designer, definitely sending me shit. But uh, yeah, they have portfolio showings, right? So like, you go to school, you make like this, like you know those trifold foldouts, and you have like you know, your projects you show, like oh, I'm gonna do like a redo, like a like you know, like a package design for like a like light bulbs and flag flagpoles and stuff like that you walk around you see like a few cool cool projects and I, you know i hit alex alex did a weed airline airline a weed airline yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yes and that's what got what me graphic, what is this you mean like he just had like the graphic design for the outside wrap of the air the airplane but it was like weed. paint the picture for me what's it look like it was i can't remember that that color i think it was yellow and it, and it just had big weed leaves all over the airplane and now i just imagine just you mean like to me i was like that's a great idea you can see right? get high in the sky yeah exactly now 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 think about it. think about it. i mean he was he was ahead of his game for sure i mean straight up now that it's on the verge of being legal at least within national flights that's what i'm talking about bro co- like imagine gonna hate us for telling the story and someone's gonna steal his idea. yeah imagine flying flying from like portland to like 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 Toronto and then flying to like Vegas, you and could then do like Denver, a, BC, bro. That's a whole other business right there, man. And, and legend has it that the teacher was talking shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, afterwards, that's why I knew that he said the teacher told him that like you know, he'll never get hired by showing this project at your portfolio showing, right? Because portfolio showing is when all the companies come in and hire people, right? And like that was the number one reason why I hired him. I was like, oh yeah, this guy. His he designs looks right? good. I mean, he smokes weed, so he must be kind of chill, right? <laughs> you mean, I love how weed. That's like the way you like judge people. Like they smoke weed, ah, give him a chance. We yeah, man, smoke, you know? he has to be somewhat chill. At least he's not a psycho, right? right? There it is. There you have it. Don't listen to your stupid fucking teachers. But that story is like everyone knows. That story is all the time. Anybody who was great was like everybody told me I was fucking stupid or like I was crazy, and then when you're a forward thinker yeah you can't expect everyone to understand no you can't the, man you can't it comes out you just gotta do your thing you mean? trust your vision trust, trust the your vision dopeness, as the boy heavy would say yeah man trust your dopeness that's right and i think sometimes you just you mean you just you mean there's there's no there's no room to care you mean like you're, you're so focused on what you're doing that like you're not even looking at anything else you're just in tunnel vision you're in tunnel vision and doing exactly what you're doing when when you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be be on this earth to do yeah exactly that's why i don't got social media i don't got any of that stuff because like whoa 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 whoa. let's talk about that for a second because that's brave and i admire that and i wish that i could do that because i'm a slave to my phone i'll be Mm -hmm. the first to admit it I have to fucking look at that thing every 10 seconds to see that little bubble pop up or fucking something new on my timeline. And I'm, I, I, it's not even something I do. It's, it's, it's instinctive it's a sickness, at this bro. It's, it's a, a sickness. sickness. I'm I like, fuck too. this phone. Get this fucking thing away from me. But then it calls my name like the telltale heart beating hideously in my fucking bedroom until I pick it up and look at Instagram and see a booty shaking. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? Isn't it sick? It's fucking It's disgusting. sick. It's taking away everyone's attention. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't like your attention is not yours anymore. Like, like I mean, initially, I got social media for the sole purpose of promoting myself through my business, you know, through DJing mm-hmm. and, and, and being on the up and up with what's happening. Cause you kind of got to, you have to, if you want to be relevant outside of being a, you know, wedding DJ, so to speak, you really got to <laughs> fucking know what the new shit is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause yeah. you got to know what the yeah. kids want to hear. Yeah. And you got to play it before they ask for it. So then you're the, the, the guy who gets it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but unfortunately, that's brought me to a space that I don't really enjoy being in. I think if you lean hard into it, it helps for me at least. Like, no matter what, whether you want to or not, you just said it. You're a slave to the phone. You're going to be looking on there. It's calling your name. It's taking your attention. It's doing all these things. 
at least for me, if I lean into it and I say, all right, I'm going to be on my phone. I'm going to be on social media anyways. Why don't I put effort into posting, building this social media? Like, create, yeah, it's not a bad make thing. More reels. Do this. Do that. Like. That I'll be honest, helps me. At I'm least. I'm the creepy guy in the corner looking at everything, yeah. and I need to. I I used to post more and create more, but I I've, I yeah I'm not that to guy. channel it because no I matter mean, what even, you're gonna do it, no yeah. matter what you're gonna do it while you're fucking driving, while you're DJing, oh, while you're yeah. talking to my somebody girl else. hates it. She's like, you're always on your fucking phone, and I'm like, no, I'm sorry, I can't help it. Yeah. So how is life without social media? Well, well, I still use it, right? But like. I, I think you're right, right? Like, you, like you go on social media. You, you there should be a purpose. Yeah. Why you go on social media, right? Like, I go on social media. I use I, I use my phone every day, right? But you're using it for a purpose. You know, there's an end goal mm. to every time you go on it. Use right? it as a tool, essentially. Yeah, it's a tool. In, instead of the other way, you're trying to like you can like do something to your emotions only mm. right it's like i'm going on there not for my emotions i'm going on there for a tool yeah it's like i'm going on there because it's a wrench yeah. right like i need to know something i can go on there and know something mm -hmm. right and i'm addicted to knowledge so i'm like going on That's there all the time to yeah man aren't you god i'm it, addicted to porn oh for real yeah yeah, yeah. it's really my... <laughs> pizza and, and masturbation yeah. for me I would love to be more addicted to reading. <laughs> that seems like a great space to be in. Reading? Dude, yeah. reading, I mean, reading is... is... Consuming knowledge. I mean, obviously, you don't have to read to consume knowledge, but the few times that I have read, I always felt that, like, my... Cru not, I wouldn't necessarily... It made me more creative, but it made me a better, like, visual thinker if that makes sense like it's when like i read a book out for your mind yeah when i read yeah. a book i'm visualizing everything that i'm reading yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to just like what's regurgitated through a video that i'm watching you know what i'm yeah. saying from someone else's perspective you yeah. get done you put a book down after reading it and you feel fucking good you, you, put, yeah. it, you put your phone yeah. down after scrolling social media and you want to kill yourself yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's very uh that's very realistic reading, reading is so good i mean like reading is so fucking good what, like, what have you read anything good lately uh yes i have the last book i read was emotional intelligence by goldman something I'm pretty sure you guys know but uh it's this is this professor that spent his whole life studying pretty much emotional intelligence he created the term emotional intelligence he spent a bunch of those what we would call prism awards or whatever uh puzzle awards i can't remember what it's called but like yeah Pulitzer surprise huh Pulitzer surprise Pull it surprise, yeah. Is that it? I think it. I think so. I just suck at names. Wish we had like a producer who could look it up or something. Right? That'd be that'd be cool. That's what Joe Rogan has, right? Yes, There's like a guy that sits there and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what he's fucking we talking about. We need that. If you're watching this <laughs> and and uh, you wanna you wanna help us out and you're in the Houston area, get it strategy or myself. Uh, we could use that. We could definitely use that. That'd be fantastic. Because there's a lot of times where I like, want to get out my phone and Google something like even I, I, I had to stop myself just now because when you said the name of that book, I wanted to like look it up, but like, I don't want to take myself out of this space. You, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, like how many times you pull your phone out to do something and then you get like sidetracked that, and by the something. First thing you do is go to Instagram just instinctively. It's like, like I half the time I forget why I even like, I'm yeah. going to write a note down to something important, something I want to remember. I'm mm -hmm. going to look something up that's important. And I completely forget because right when that phone comes out, baby, I flick it up. I scroll over two times to the right. Mm -hmm. I hit the Instagram. I know exactly where it is. Like, it's disgusting. Yeah, it is. Dude, it'd be kind of cool if they, like, now you guys have, like, a screen here. If you guys just, like, had, like, a like an AI, you just ask the question, like, hey, Google, right? Like, where you have that? And then it would just pull up, and then they would somehow show the audience what that pulled up. I mean, I think man, that's, that's a, a whole other thing that we could do. That's a whole other software, man. Y'all yeah. could, like, maybe create that, man. That That's some money right there. If the Mac wasn't in the other room being broadcast into here, I think it's you could even say. I think you can still Siri, do it. You could just say, hey, Siri right maybe i don't know uh bring some know, ai into the, the show that, like to operate the stream labs right like to tell the stream labs that you want to pull up another window and show it on could the fuck screen. up the, the not that the it broadcasting? could fuck, i mean it could anything could fuck <clears throat> too much it, fuck it up, but i but i don't know like someone would literally have to write that yeah like, hey screen lab <laughs> bro you got a product man we just gave you a product you mean okay. you should Hell yeah, yeah, you should hook it up. Did they have the donate donating thing on here? No. This oh is, man, that was the glory days of Twitch. 
Yeah, man, where they, like, people just like click in and you just see money on the screen. Yeah, bits. Unfortunately, these days, the only thing happened on Twitch is video games, really, right? Yeah. I've been on Twitch for a while. But I mean, no, I actually just talked to Shoney, uh, and he's he said he's not even really DJing in the clubs anymore because his ears are fucked up. He's like, I'm only on Twitch. Bro, my ears what? are fucked up. I'm actually, I, I set an appointment to see an ear, nose, and Well, originally, I was going to go see the audiologist, and I'm like, maybe you should see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Man, you guys so, should start DJing on Twitch. That's kind of cool. We did we over did, the pandemic. It's it's different. You, it's different. Yeah, you've I got, know. Scene. I mean, there's some people like shout out heavy once again who are who took it and fucking blasted off. And and we had a cool little show on there and had a good fun. We did a 24 hour DJ set live streamed. It was fucking dope. It was fun. But there's something to be said about like the you hype. said the hype when you're DJing in a club. You reciprocate that energy that the crowd gives you, yeah. and it 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 feels completely different however i will say that they kind of emulate that when with bits and stuff you're getting response from your for sure yeah like they, they're there it's there it's not the real thing because it's impossible to replicate the real thing without actual people in front of you but there is a uh a, a stand-in for it yeah there is a, a working machine that does something and people of the make sort. good money out of it yeah i would I, I mean i like streaming sometimes i'll play video games and stream i just like to be on stream. I like I like to have a camera rolling because in case anything happens, you have a fucking camera rolling and then you can go clip it up and put it on social media. True. I enjoy that. that. But uh yeah, let's wrap this up. Is well, there yeah, anything is there anything else you want to uh touch on or anything you want to say or nah, man. Uh, shout out, maybe like shout out your girlfriend or something? Nah, man. Just He's like, nah, fuck said, her. Nah. <laughs> Hey, y'all y- y'all should come and uh, uh whoever it is should come and like smash that car at no good. Is it right? still there? There's nothing left to smash. I thought you said smash. No, nah, no, nah, there's still some more st- stuff to smash. We gotta smash like the, the like the top section down. Who's filming that? I think Silas and Silas yeah, Silas is like, filming it. Are they doing it slow yeah. motion? Is it gonna be like a cool like? So I think the wait, the Dolo, plan. have you go, gone smash it? You go smash I've it. actually been in the studio a couple times this week, and no one invited me to smash. For real, damn, yeah, man. I'm gonna blame strategy. Yeah, yeah you should strategy. go over there and we smash that thing, that. man. I, I got some fucking aggression. I need to take. Yeah, it. dude, sure. dude, dude. So like, I, I, I want to beat up the top. I'm. I think it's gonna the next piece of cool content. We're gonna we're gonna take a chain. Uh, what is it called? Uh, saw and saw off the 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 top part of the car, and you stand inside the car and. Only the back part of the car is up, and we'll make it into a DJ booth. Okay, that'd be cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just talked about that today. I've seen that before. Not not in that way of smashing it up. I've seen someone take the front end of a car and turn it into a DJ booth. It's pretty dope. Yeah, but like, so on that song, we want to release it and do like a small little get together, like a little party. So, whoever wants to join on that, we're going to hit us up, hit them no good. That's a strong strong, uh, idea. I like that. Yeah, I think that's going to be a fun one. We're going to put a little light on top, like the same light that we filmed that Mm -hmm. we filmed that day, the Mm -hmm. really nice high powered light. Uh, so it's like just great content for everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. So I want I want everyone. So that's that's what you're talking about, right? Like like even on the space, like okay, you you don't you don't got you don't got it yet, and you just kind of want to like be part of the community. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have these events where you go to where you're part of the community, mm-hmm. right? Um, well, that was kind of what mixed signals started out as, no? Yeah, pretty much, man. Mick, we, yeah, we started out mixed signals. Before you sold your soul, yeah, yeah, we sold our soul, unfortunately. Yeah. Because now y'all are at, at Toto Santos, well, which is still dope. Not for long, but yeah. Yeah, I I believe I believe Mick Signal needs to move around. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, I, I, it should be anywhere. It, it should be in, it, it should be like I, I swear to you, not like out of nowhere. The find pop-ups? like a yeah, like a papa, like a fucking like like old school McDonald's has been closed. You know what's it, it, it? Or you could do you, a Denny's, like they did the fucking the punk. Have you ever seen that where they do like a punk rock concert pop up at, at a random Denny's? No, I but I, I just recently saw. First of all, I saw Fred again playing inside of a halal cart on the streets of New York. And in that same week, I saw Gorgon City playing in front of uh, the famous uh, sub shop on Grand Avenue. What's it called? Uh, oh, you're talking about Joe's or John's? Yeah. Or, uh, the one in, in Little Italy? Yeah. In Grand Avenue, Little Italy? Uh, yeah, yeah. On Grand Ave. Uh, right by the, Stu's. With the fire sandwiches right yeah. by Stu's, uh, Stu's. What's it called? Across um, the street from uh, Some with a G. Botana? Whatever. What was it? Vito. Not Vito's. Uh, what the oh, fuck? Oh, are you talking about the, the, the one that next to the bakery? Yeah. Oh, uh, what the fuck is it called? Uh, is it not Vino's? Not Vino's. Uh, something with a G. Not. Damn, I'm so mad. I Geo's? forgot what it's called. Not Geo's. 
Graziano, JP Graziano. JP. Gra- oh, oh, that's not. No, that's on Randolph. Dude. Is it? Yeah, JP Graziano. That's on Randolph. Okay. Would well. it be a fucking crazy idea for like you mean like you, you guys know the Houston scene, right? At two o'clock, all the clubs get out. Washington's just like straight, just Gunshots. Like, <laughs> yeah. Gunshots shit, everywhere. Shit. A bunch of people running around, right? Yeah. I think it'd be a great piece of content. Do you do an after party? But the after party is well, like the cops really don't give a fuck about anything on Washington Avenue, so I think you could pull it off for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. Check this out. So you do it like this, right? You get a U-Haul. We have everything inside the U-Haul. Grab like maybe like like five right. like car oh, batteries. Run up the thing. Speakers pop out. Bang. Yeah, it's already inside. We're, we're already inside, bro. We're already just chilling in there, right? Those, those gorilla rave tactics. I, you know who's doing them really great? Diplo. Have you seen? The He's Diplo? doing that shit now. Yeah. Well, the way he does it is well. He did a few. And what he'll, I think he might have got it from this other guy who I don't know his name, but they, they would do like a traveling rave. So the guy what? has like a backpack with like uh with a table. Oh, I've seen that. Up, and he, he he has like somebody following him with a big ass speaker carrying it, and they just accumulate this big crowd like like the the pipe piper type shit. And they like go through the subway and then they'll get out and they'll like walk down the street and just continue to get bigger and bigger until the cops shut it down. Yeah, That's until the cops shut it down, right? Yeah, it's pretty dope. We yeah, just, do that just like U-Haul, right? Like, we just drive around until they go, hey, I'm bitch, in. you guys I'm can't in. can't do it anymore. I'll be like, all right, cool. My bad, man. Let's peace out, right? If you're ready for that, I'm in. I'm, I'm well, down. The, the worst I saw, they got to find like a... Eight hundred dollars, but then Diplo paid it on the spot to the kid. Well, we we, we we could we could we could like like next week I was thinking about doing the car one right, and then the right, following let's not week. Give away too much info. Let's talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. this so we could fucking make it happen. And oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. We'll, we'll talk I'll about this live Thank, Thank you guys for joining Strategy and Dolo Show Party with Strategy Podcast. Shouts to Radon for joining us. Episode sixty eight, incredible episode, great episode, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Peace. This is the 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 doot 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 doot.